Because that's what he does, he's a creative yeah. director. Hi there, welcome to another big show. You know, watching this show may help you save a life one day. That is right. We are looking at what to do in an emergency. You want to gather all the family around for that one? So go on, go get all of them. We're going to get this show on the road. Come on. Yep, done. Today, fitness trends for summer. Will you be wearing them or working out with them? As soon as you start jumping, you can't help not smile. A healthy gut means a healthy you. We'll find out why. And we meet a very young hero who, thanks to his quick actions, saved the life of his mother. I said, can I have ambulance, please? So join us for the show for everyone who wants to live their life just that little bit better. And at the end of the day, you only live once, right? Let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. <laughs> all right, a jam-packed show today. We've crammed everything in, everything. Zoe. What's got your attention? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked. I am not mad about shopping. I know. Surprise. You look eh? like other girls. Oh, thank you? you. That's what I like the boys to say. <laughs> but, you know, I have a few girlfriends who will sit up and take notice of this story that we're going to do about the shopping diet. Mm. We're going to look into your shopping habits and how you can live with less. Mm. I think the diet bit is in your bank balance. It just plummets, right? And then you just want it to grow. Yeah. It's a good way of putting on. Yeah. <laughs> going to be a great story. Gerald's here too. Hello. Hello, Ed, and hello, everybody. We're going to continue with our sugar story today. Okay. Our love-hate mm -hmm. relationship with sugar and carbs. Indeed. All right. And Joe, you've set us up for a big topic chat. Yes. I'm really intrigued with this topic. We're talking gut health yeah. and how it can be the key to your overall wellness. What? No puns about guts. <laughs> no. Why? Hmm. Just had a gut feeling that you'd do something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, I just I uh, couldn't stomach it. Oh. <laughs> Bianca, continues. <laughs> Bianca, get us out of here, please. Help us. Well, I went and had a look at fitness fads because we all know they're everywhere mm -hmm. and 2019 is no different. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I explored what's going to happen next year. Mind you, that took some guts. Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Fashion trends are ever-changing, so are fitness trends. And in the past few years, we've seen some weird and wacky ways that people stay fit. You may have missed the opportunity to do a twerking class, or goat yoga, cat yoga, and even running backwards have been big hits. So what fitness trends will we see in 2019? One group fitness class that's taking off is Sky Zone. Sky Zone adds a whole new meaning to trampolining. They call it Sky Fit. It's a combination of fast and slow jumps, variations of traditional aerobic steps, dynamic sprints and power sports elements. This workout is three times more effective than jogging and is due to the constant gravitational changes, which involve more than 400 muscles being tightened and relaxed at the same time. So talk to me about the concept behind Sky Fit. Is it a new thing? So we've actually been running SkyFit here for probably three years. 30 minute sessions, they're just the, they get down on the trampolines, we get some sit-ups going on, ab workouts, bums moving, it's a really good time. <laughs> and you tell me I'm going to be sweating during this session. Totally, if hard? you're not sweating, you're not working hard enough. Alright. Oh, um, as soon as you start jumping, you can't help not smile. You just smile, it's good fun, you have a really bad day at work, as soon as you get on the trampoline, you're happy again. I'm not a big fan of the gym, so this is something totally different. It's still got a really good workout. I would never have thought that bouncing around on a trampoline would have been so strenuous. When I was a kid, it was just good fun. Now it's got my heart rate pumping, and with the technology available in 2019, you'll be able to monitor just how fit or not you are. Ali, 2019 fitness trends. Yes. What is out on the market at the moment? Well, it's really exciting. So they're definitely having the latest in the wearable technologies, um, things like clothing, accessories. We've got headphones here. What makes these any different to what else is on the market? They've really worked on making the comfort and style of the headphones more attractive to consumers. So if you can have, you know, maybe 40 hours of music playback on your Bluetooth headphones, um, you're a lot likely to get out there so you're and stay run longer. For longer. And what about this one? You can actually get this from Chemist Warehouse. My DNA test kit, I did the test a week ago yeah, and I'm waiting for my results, yeah. but a saliva test? Yeah, so it's um, it's a swab kit that you can buy yourself and do in the home. So this analyzes things such as your recovery rates, your heart rates, and it will generate
made a report that advises the activities, um, exercises, food and nutrition best suited for your body. Uh, you can then use that to uh, devise your program. Another trend that's going to blast off in 2019 is Barry's boot camp. And according to Barry's publicity, it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. When it comes to fitness trends for 2019, they don't come trendier than Barry's Boot Camp. The concept is simple. Take a room full of high intensity exercise gear, add a ton of mirrors, banks and banks of red lighting, and then crank up the hottest tunes on the planet. And the result is an LA fitness craze the Kardashians, the Beckhams, and a platoon of Victoria's Secret models can't get enough of. It's like working out in a nightclub. Blake Bridges is the head instructor. And do you find as soon as people walk in the room, it makes them want to train harder because of the nightclub atmosphere? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we curate our own playlist. We play the top hit songs, hip hop, rap, pop, top 40, anything you want. Um, the red lights just sets the mood, you know? You yeah. look better, you feel better, you want to work harder. Yeah, the red lights makes you look more muscular in the mirrors. Oh, yeah. I was the, happy the with that. The toneness, the tightness, <laughs> you, you're running yourself down in the treadmill. Yeah. How long does each class go for? 55 minutes, so it's a 50 minute workout with a five minute stretch. You're gonna spend half of your time on the treadmill, half of your time on the floor. The classes are made up of 25 minutes of weights and resistance training and 25 minutes of interval based treadmill cardio. Burning up to 1,000 calories in 50 minutes and spiking the metabolism for around 48 hours afterwards. In three, two, and one. Hop it up, let's have some fun. In two, and one. Lord, legs up, give me those crunches. Exhale, Jenner's five on the left, eight, nine, ten. Barry's has right. opened up their first boot camp in Sydney this year. But Melbourne will be up and running in early 2019. Oh, and in keeping with its LA origins, if any A-list celebs are watching right now, don't worry, the staff work to a self-imposed no selfies policy. So there you have it, just a few of the fitness trends coming in 2019. Some strange, maybe a little odd, but at least they get you sweating and using some of those muscles you haven't used in a while. And up off that couch or from behind your desk to exercise, which at the end of the day is the most important thing. Bianca, great story. Who'd have thought with that Barry's boot camp set up, you can have a kind of a nightclub as part of your workout. And it's exactly a nightclub. Lights, loud music, and can you believe Victoria Beckham there was there two days before I went? No, I so shattered. close. Do they serve up little sort of mocktails or something? There? Get protein smoothies as you walk out. That's but I want to take you through some of this new yeah, equipment what are we we've on? got here. This is a skill mill, so it's a non-motorised treadmill. Okay. So the first one we're going to try is just Back up straight, arms straight, and it's all in your glutes. And if you see the deck, it's kind of curved here, so we're using our own gravity to, to start the power, yeah, right? And of course, my resistance up a lot harder than yours. OK, it's a challenge, competitive <laughs> match. What about, OK, so this is starting to really work, isn't Ooh, it? It is, it is hard work. Do you want to try another one? Yeah, go on, give us some. All right, so we're going to get down a little bit lower in like a rugby scrum position. Yep. All right, now I've this is called you. a low sledge push. Right. We're, again, using our glutes. Right. And it starts to work, doesn't it? Um, you do this in netball too, though, so who are you kidding? Tell me, <laughs> what are some of these other crazy fitness fads that we're seeing in the next year? They've got brilliant titles and amazing ways to keep fit. Oh, there's so many. Have you heard of naked yoga? <laughs> we're not doing that now. No. no. <laughs> Laughing yoga. What? Karaoke, bit of singing while you work out. Really? Yeah. That's a workout? OK. And a uh, box arena. Now, what is that? <laughs> like a ballerina? Apparently. But then a punch. A little bit of ballet while you're boxing away. Oh, my goodness me. Ooh. For the budding mermaids out there, is there not a workout? Mermaid fitness class. That is hilarious. In the pool with a mermaid tail on. No. I think we should go and do it. As the two fittest members of the House of Wellness team, I think we should go and do it. I'm a seven in a tail, just if you're trying that. <laughs> um, that'll be fun. Um, great piece of equipment. This is the yep. skill mill. Skill mill. Oh, we can even do a lateral lunge as well while we're here, just to work the gluteus minimus. We'll do that, but we should take a little break after this. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back right after this on the House of Wellness. While Ed gets his breath, later we meet a little guy with a big story on how he saved a life. And then he did um, CPR. But next, we're talking about our insides and the importance of gut health. Stay with us, it's all happening here on the House of Wellness. Having a gut feeling is a term thrown around regularly, but is there more to it than we think? 
Gut issues are common and half our population suffers from a digestive problem in any 12 month period. From simple digestive disorders all the way to bowel cancer that affects one in 20 Australians. But what about the gut's connection to our brain and the term microbiome sometimes described as our second brain? Could it play a significant part in our moods and mental health? Well, we sent Brody Young out to discover what people and their guts think about this complex topic. Do you think your gut and your brain are somehow connected? Obviously yes. they are. Yes, they are. Yep. 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 In what way? What happens here it happens there. Or the other way around? I mean, well, yeah, if you're stressed, I reckon it has an effect. So as someone that actually suffers from uh, mental health, so I have bipolar disorder and also adult ADHD, yep. since I've changed my diet and my gut health, my mental health has improved probably, I'd say, 90%. Yeah, probiotics. Uh, yes, I take one of them every day. Yeah, I can't judge my wind passing on, uh, on, on the rest of the population and what they do. Um, but yeah, you certainly, you know, you'll have certain meals, and, and but that could be just like uh, eating, veg you know, vegetables can suddenly give you that. Like last year, I did an experiment by myself where I cut sugar, coffee, and alcohol like for two months, and you can feel a difference indeed. Well, look, in terms of gut health, there's so many more products out there that never used to exist. Um, like things like kefir have become popular recently, yep. as well as the traditional yogurt and stuff like that. Yep. Kombucha. Kiwis with the skin on. Really? The yeah. fur? Yeah, kiwi with the skin on works every time. <laughs> that is a good tip. I thought I was the only one eating the whole kiwi fruit. It's so much neater that way. Do you, Keeps it all you the don't peel the kiwi well, fruit? Well, it's get all India. It's great. Oh. Nature's little packaging. Um, <laughs> interesting cross-section of opinions, though, that Brody Young heard when we took to the streets talking about gut health. And although we don't necessarily like talking about it, particularly the noises our gut can make, oh. perhaps we should. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Blame it's very the dog. embarrassing. <laughs> but there's good reason to pay attention to the noises and other signals our insides are sending us. According to the Gut Foundation Australia, bowel cancer affects about 1 in 20 people in this country, which leads us to the big question... Why is the health of our gut so important? Yeah, let's make it a big topic for discussion mm. today. Our panel of experts include naturopath Dr David Javan. We have Dr Amy Kaja as well, integrative GP. GQ is with us as well. I mean, Doc, how do we know that our gut is actually healthy? Straight up. So many people may actually have gut symptoms, so that could be something like bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhoea, irregular bowel habit, maybe some food cravings, maybe nausea, vomiting. Um, they might find that they're intolerant to certain foods. However, the important thing is, especially from a lot of the recent research now, is that people can have gut issues even though they may not have gut symptoms. Right, right, right. So, for example, oh. children's learning new behavioural issues like autism, ADHD, yeah. really? autoimmune conditions. Again, that's by virtue of the fact that most of the immune system resides in the gut. Yeah. So these days, with a lot of chronic illness that we're seeing today, we always have to be look at the gut, whether they have symptoms or not. Right. I've been very interested in the link between the gut and mental health, mm. David. Yeah. How, how does this work? I'm amazed by it. Well, first of all, um, a developed adult brain weighs between 1.3 and 1.4 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And they reckon there's about a kilogram of bacteria in our body, most of it in our gut. But yet, that one kilogram of bacteria is clinically considered to be more sophisticated in genomes and biochemical pathways than your brain. No, no way. Yeah, but Goodness. then there was another discovery of this pathway called the gut-brain axis. Now, fundamentally, it's this bi-directional network where the gut and the brain basically talk to each other. Amazing. Right? And they've now discovered probiotics that actually can assist with anxiety, depression. And there's even three of them they've actually found. Um, from memory, there was um, acidophilus, uh, bulgar bulgarum, and also cassie, which have been actually shown to decrease what we call the depression score in people with MDD. So um, in the future, what we're going to have is things like psychobiotic right. treatments for mental health. I mean, Phenomenal stuff. the correlation between our diet and therefore mm. our happiness and mm. mental health is quite strong. There's more sure. happiness receptors in our gut well, than our brain, are there not? Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm a little blown away by how complicated we make gut function. I, mean, I know we're all in the, in the industry, but essentially when you eat something, it either your tummy's happy with or it's not happy mm -hmm. with. When you take a medication, your tummy either tolerates it or it doesn't. And we just need to, I think, reduce the complicated stuff where it is so complicated now mm. to really enjoy what 
we should be enjoying. What about, away from diet, the effects of stress, say, from our work life, our environment, on our gut health? Mm. Dr Amy. There is now so much evidence that stress affects our gut, and, and the w World Health Organization have actually deemed stress to be the 21st century epidemic. So mm. it's something that we all have to address. So uh, aside from our mental, emotional stress from day-to-day -day life, work and personal, stress to our system also is about having the wrong foods, not having enough sleep, having too much or too little exercise, exposure to environmental toxins. Stress causes leaky gut, which um, underpins a lot of the chronic illnesses that we see today. What is leaky gut? So leaky gut is basically where the barrier between two cells that are next to each other in the gut, that gap widens a lot more than it should. What that means is twofold. First of all, it means that toxins that are meant to be excreted from the gut, from the blood, can re-enter the, the, the blood and toxins can circulate anywhere through the bloodstream and affect the brain, any other organ at all. It also means that nutrients that are meant to be absorbed into the blood can get lost out through that leaky gut as mm. well. So often you actually see clinically low iron and low other uh, sort of B12 and zinc deficiencies, not because people aren't eating the right things, but it's not getting absorbed and it's just right. being lost. All mm. of that due to stress. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. what can we do about it? We know that we're supposed to eat better and exercise and sleep better, but yeah. that's easier said than done. Absolutely. How do we address these issues surrounding our gut problems? David. Well, first of all, you know, we go back to some very basic things. We've got to keep our fibre intake up, 30 mm -hmm. to 50 grams a day. We've got to keep our hydration up. We've got to keep minimal the intake of things like antibiotics and drugs and so on. And, you know, also um, keeping to a nice balanced diet, avoiding things like preserved meats, some um, synthetic foods, all that sort of stuff. So I guess it's all dietary. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, another thing we can also talk about is things like exercise and hydration and so on. Mm -hmm. And of course, my favourite one is probiotics. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not going to leave that one alone because I think that has a huge influence. Is it okay for your tummy to rumble a lot? Like, you know, I feel it's obviously impolite and it's embarrassing, <laughs> but are our stomachs supposed to make noises and, you know, d talk to us? Well, this, this is the... I mean, if you don't present with many symptoms, yeah. um, you know, such as the bloating, the pain, the discomfort, the diarrhoea and all the rest of it. I think it's quite normal. Mm. But then there's another thing that we call aerophagia, which simply means that we swallow a lot of air because we're all talking too much. Ah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> too quickly. Yeah. 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 This is and a big I've thing. Oh, I've, I've like... heard Joe talking to her. <laughs> that is so my problem. I, I talk so fast. Phone in like... one hand, sandwich in the other sort of thing, and then yeah. people try to do something with another third hand that they don't have. And that's a huge one. And people often think that it's a bit of a joke, you know, you don't, you're chewing food. It's such... The process of digestion starts in your mouth. Yes. Yeah. And oh. if you bypass first that 50% of it, I mean, it's all systems lost then. Yeah. So to wrap things up, um, really important to keep it simple, as you're saying, you've seen the, we've seen the rise and rise of uh, over-prescription of antibiotics, haven't we? We had yeah, recently yeah. Antibiotics oh. Awareness Week. Yes. Mm. We're addicted to them. We're one of the worst nations in the world. Yes. Yep. So all, and a lot of medications there, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, the yeah. classic, every second yeah, person takes a non-steroidal, mm -hmm. and that irritates the blazes, yeah. your gut lining. It throws our important mm -hmm. gut out of whack and keep the stress at bay as well. Thanks, Absolutely. Dr. Amy, for being with us. Thank Dr. you. David. My pleasure. Gerald as well. Pleasure. Really interesting, big topic. Yes, and, and I can't apologise enough. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us, everybody. We'll take a quick break. Back with more here on the House oh, of Wellness. Later, are you shopping for the right reasons, or is it an emotional coping mechanism? We'll find out. But next, turn up the tunes, get up off the couch. We're making fresh salsa in the kitchen. Stay with us. We'll be mixing it up all right after the break here on the House of Wellness. Now, here's a snack that's guaranteed to boost your wellness with the rejuvenating powers of marine collagen. To make your crunchy crackers, combine a parrot's dream worth of seeds including chia, sesame, sunflower and hemp. Add water and mix, then spread and segment before placing on a slow, steady bake. Now for colour and zing, whip up a yummy salsa of spring onions, cucumber, tomato, chilli, coriander, garlic and lemon juice and finish up with a lemon and ginger infused iced collagen water. The goodness of a workout in one seedy snack.
fresh so I could move into my house and just cook all day. <laughs> a seedy snack, but a yummy, healthy one too. And a great choice too when you've got those kind of pre-dinner hunger pangs as well. I have the hunger pangs all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what? I love myself a little salsa. Do you? And adding that collagen just gives it that extra touch of goodness, right, GQ? We have yeah. some strength, Zoe, to mm. the... Helps us... Yes, of course. Mm. Skin. Of course. Good for the skin. Let's dive into some of your calls. Oscar is standing by first up in Newcastle, New South Wales. How can we help you out? I drink lots of iced tea and sugary drinks. Can you give me a better alternative? Yeah, I think sugary Ooh. is the key there. There's plenty of better options. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. There are so many other options, and the simplest is water, Ed. Of course. Um, Oscar, you've just got to change things, and it's difficult to do first up. So gently remove those things. Focus on water. Um, have a look at your neighbour's lemon tree, squeeze some lemons into some water. Yeah, yeah, don't, you, you, you can usually gift those. But you know, good that he's thinking about it and asking uh, Absolutely. That sort of Iced tea is a, it's a classic. Yeah. It's mm. loaded with sugar. Yeah. And sparkling water is a nice little yes, it is. fun yeah. thing you can add in there. Yes, you can. Add and some sparkles, Owen. Why not? <laughs> Thank you. Next, we met Carly from Tomorong, New South Wales, with this question. I suffer from asthma and I was worried that my kids might get it. Is there any signs? early on to show that they may have it and if so is there any preventatives I can give them to stop it from happening? Yeah good question from Carly. Is asthma a hereditary condition? Yes it can be Ed and it's linked to eczema so often okay. those two run side by side. Carly there was a lot of work done recently about the benefits of fish and fish oil mm. in reducing the risk of asthma in children. Interesting. Interesting. Now we've probably known about that for 40 years but there's some really good solid impressive research now showing that. How, at what age can you start that off? Well any Young? age, yes, of course. Okay, yes. baby your, fish your, oil. Your boy, well, your boy could eat lots of fish. He does. Good. Every day. And with that moisture, of course, to keep an eye on skin. Mm, okay, and our last call is from Chad from Tregear in New South Wales. Hello. I am a big person. I was just wondering what vitamin would be the best to help lose weight with a diet. People often look for a supplement to help. Is that the first step? Often in an effort to lose weight, they eat less. And the first thing that happens is fat fatigue. They get yeah. very, very tired. So obviously a multivitamin is going to help there, but the decision to lose weight is very important. That's been taken. So a bit of advice, a multivitamin is important for energy because often you get sick too when you mm. start cutting back on food. Mm -hmm. But at least the decision's been made. So well done. So yeah. if you do get sick and you're pushing through that, yes. you won't get sick again, is it? Almost like a detox? Well, it's your body reacting to the fact that you're having less food. OK. And it's just You'll get, Your body will get used to of it. Of course it will. Okay. Great questions today. Fabulous answers from our expert. Keep them coming. You can head via our website if you'd like to reach us. Houseofwellness.com.au. There is the Ask tab to reach Gerald. Have a look at some of our recipes and watch back any of our stories that take your interest. Houseofwellness.com.au. Now, one of the biggest concerns people have with ageing is the decline in their mental capacity. Yeah, having things explained again and again, forgetting key information and being a little more absent-minded can be tough. Yeah, so to tell us more on how we can keep our brains young, we're joined by Swiss Senior Training Manager, Dr David Canada. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you. Welcome. Fascinating processes take place within our brain as we age. What's actually going on there? Yeah, unfortunately, it's a natural part of ageing where some of the connections and neurons within the brain uh, start to break down. So the ability to process information starts to slow down. And it's harder to remember things and harder to concentrate. And certainly it's really accelerated by some of the poor dietary and lifestyle choices we make. Oh, so what are some tips, say, for those that don't have as much memory as the rest of us? Yeah, it's really about keeping the, the brain active and, and stimulated. Uh, so things like problem solving, puzzles are really good. Sudoku. Um, yeah, oh, excellent. Yep. Good. My, my kids are very big on the uh, on the Rubik's Cube, so I'll just keep practising with them, shall I? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Leave this with me. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's really that mental dexterity, uh, which utilising the hands, the arts and crafts, cooking, um, building things is really important, mm. um, as well as diet, um, of course. So. Uh, fish is really important, high in DHA, uh, as well as things like fruits, nuts, seeds and vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, really good source of antioxidants, as well as uh, B vitamins, which are, are really good for maintaining brain function. Right, yeah. I mean, we've chatted before, Jill, haven't we, Often. about our brain maintaining this yeah. sort of neuroplasticity, so that'll continue. It will. We've got to stimulate it along the way, as, don't as, we? As he ages, David, which is very important. Uh, what herbs? You know, let's focus on a couple of herbal suggestions that perhaps a person ageing might reinforce their mental health and memory. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, ginkgo is probably the most uh, well known mm -hmm. um, due to its neuroprotective oh. effects on the brain to help uh, memory. Uh, Brahmi is an Indian herb that's uh, really good at supporting brain function, particularly in those areas of, of memory and concentration. Sure. Um, but certainly if you're someone who can't remember taking all these um, supplements, you can look at taking a multivitamin, sure. uh, in particular the Swiss Ultivite range, which not only contains those vitamins and minerals, but it's also combined with uh, antioxidants and herbal extracts mm. to help support uh, healthy mental performance as well. Sure. And, and you can take those regularly, can't you? You can have one every day without a problem. Yeah, definitely. Sort of a one a day, keep that into your routine. And the bees too? Yeah, definitely, that can be a, a day thing. And put it next to your, um, your breakfast or, you know, new toothbrush so you can always remember. remember. Because you're having day. a memory problem, you'll forget it. Great definitely. tips. Keep our brains stimulated. That's the thing, through puzzles and dexterity and socially as well. Go for those bees, the yes. vitamin B, mm -hmm. so important. Fish oils as well. Puzzles. And you said ginkgo is your first go-to with the brahmi as well as another good option. Definitely. Fantastic. Um, I've solved this. That is done. Uh, not so sure. Not so oh, sure. Oh, come on! On all uh, every other angle. Yeah, OK, keep trying there. Good start. Take your bees. David, thank you so much for that. There's plenty more to come after the break here on the House of Wellness. Be sucky to And yes, we're beaming out right across Australia on the Seven Network and the Prime Network, a show packed with life, nutrition, health and inspiration. Later, it's all about the baggage, emotional shopping and how to live with less. Coming up, we meet a little Aussie hero whose quick actions saved his mother's life. I went out the computer room, then I found her on the couch having a seizure. All that and so much more here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. Well, our house hero this week is a young boy whose actions not only saved his mother's life, but showed age was no barrier when dealing with an emergency situation. At only six years of age, Jem found his mum having a seizure and called triple zero immediately. Through the help of an operator and opening up the house for paramedics, this young boy did more than just save his mother's life. On that day, I can confirm that Jem saved my life. I get emotional just thinking about it. it he's, it's, he's amazing. It's really oh, it's so hard to explain. I had a bad night as I, I sort of had this nauseous feeling laying down and so I got up and it was school holidays, so Jem was home. And I said to Jem, oh, I've got a really bad neck and a bit of a headache. I'm just going to have a little rest for 10 minutes. So off he runs to the office to get on my computer to play his game. I went out the um, computer room, then I found her on the couch having a seizure. He said I didn't respond and he just went for the phone and rang triple zero. I said, can I have ambulance, please? Ambulance? What is the town and the suburb of your emergency? Hello. Hello, what's the, what's the address of your emergency? My mummy's in really bad pain. OK, what address will be coming to, darling? So his brain just clipped into, I know what I've got to do, I've been told. Is she awake? No. Is she breathing? I'll go see. Do you know what's wrong with her? Thing no, happened to her? I don't know. OK, all right, what's your name? Yeah. And then he did um, CPR and he said, my stomach started to move again. I don't even know as an adult how I would react. And he's six and he just knew what to do. The great thing about this story is not only the happy, happy ending for Jem and his mum, but this is something that all parents can prepare their children with. If you just uh, find yourself feeling unwell and having difficulty breathing, a lot of children might want to spend their time trying to comfort you and make you feel better. So the best place to start in building preparedness in an emergency is to start having conversations with your children about what an emergency is and how to respond. Hello, I need emergency ambulance, please. So that they know what to say when they ring a triple O operator. They too will be able to help you and other friends and family in these types of situations. And that's how you get yourself a little hero. Now I've, you know, been able to meet their triple zero responders and hearing that he's the youngest they've had here on the Sunshine Coast. They've had a 10-year-old, but not, not a six-year-old. 
And they said it normally doesn't end with a happy ending with a child either. The amazing thing I think about this story is it's not only my life that Jem has saved, it's potentially lots of other lives by now, other children knowing how to ring triple zero thanks to Jem. I think I saved my mum's life. Oh, did well done. Bless. An incredible story and such bravery and sensibility for someone yeah, so young. Good kid. Just shows staying calm and taking the right steps in an emergency isn't easy, particularly if you don't know what to do. With the holidays just around the corner, we thought it was time to brush up our knowledge on emergency procedures. So joining us today to take us through those vital steps are Alan Walker, Acting Superintendent from New South Wales Thank Ambulance. You. We'll bring our pro lifeguard in just a sec as well. Alan, thanks for being with us. I guess we need to know the very first thing we should do when we're in an emergency potentially triple zero sure. situation? Um, well, the first thing you need to do is obviously try and stay calm. That's hard. Um, it is absolutely hard. Mm. Um, and then dial triple zero. Um, and the the call takers that are on the other end are, are trained to get you through most emergencies. Yeah, right. Mm. Fairly like we see on those shows right now. Absolutely. Now, summer is, is coming and there is a rise of incidents that happen, especially around uh, families, barbecues, driving, all of those sure. things. What are the main areas we should be watching out for coming into summer? Okay, so obviously for, for driving, we're, it's coming into the festive season. Mm. So a lot of families will be driving long distances, so taking the breaks and... Um, Staying hydrated, remaining, um, yeah, just alert, staying alert, mm -hmm. yep, and and managing your fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, all the dangers around water, pools, rivers, mm. waterways. And we might bring in Steve Dowman as well, who's uh, with the Northern Beaches Lifeguards. Well, nice to have you with us oh, too, Steve. Um, I was a former pro lifeguard, but I'm a bit dusty, so it's here we go. I'll help you. Out. Really good time to practice our CPR. The good thing is, it's not that hard to do. But the thing is, we're seeing the rise of drownings, aren't we? So sadly, around pools, rivers, waterways. Yeah, yeah that's most disappointing. I think last year there was a, once again an increase in the drownings. Um, I think 25% of the drownings now out there in the rural areas and the mm. wow. streets and creams. Mm -hmm. um, oceans and the harbours also getting a lot of drownings, so it's All quite right. unfortunate. What, quickly, what should we be looking out for at the beach or around the pool? I think the most important thing when you go to the beach is go to a beach that's got a patrol area with red and white yellow flags, mm -hmm. proper swimming flags, mm -hmm. speak to the lifeguards or the lifesavers and ask them where the best place to swim is. Yeah, of mm. course. In the backyard pool, obviously there's legislation for the pool fencing. Yep. But there's no legislation to say make sure you close the door you know, or the gate all the time. And yeah, that's one right. of the biggest problems. You know, one of the greatest numbers of drownings are kids under five. It's because they're getting through those pool fences that are left mm. open or climbing over. Why don't we try and do a quick sort of recess recap here? Now, we're not going to be able to teach you to do CPR properly in this short space of time. So enrolling to do a course is so vital if you're a parent, a grandparent, around kids, because you never know when you need these vital skills. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give us some basics, though, James. Yes. OK, so first of all, you've got to maintain or check whether the person's conscious and alert. Mm -hmm. And we do that by shaking and shouting or by just touching and... Rubbing, yep. yeah. Um, Not rubbing, if, more of a... Yeah, just grab. more of a... a grab. A yep. Grab and Not a, a gentle... Shake. OK. Can you hear me? Um, and, you? Yeah, and calling the patient by name if you know, yep. the, if you know the patient. Um, or just asking if you can hear me. If you can't hear us, we've got to roll them over onto their side and make sure their airway's clear. Mm -hmm. So we just roll them over. And not usually that the, light. Yeah, not that quickly. <laughs> but just making sure that you're supporting the head and the neck and making sure that there's any, if there's anything in the mouth that it'll be airway's drained out clear. and the airway is clear. So we're going to roll the patient back onto their back. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're going to get somebody to call for help. So yep. we're going to get somebody to ring for triple zero and call for an ambulance. And by doing that, you've also got the call takers that are on the other end of the phone that can provide Excellent. information. Yep, next. The I next thing then is to tilt the, the patient's head slightly back and, and supporting their head and neck. And with a pistol grip, so holding your hand, so you just put your fingers on their chin, other hand on their forehead, and tilt their head back slightly. All right. Okay, so that's all you really need to do to begin with. Um, feel for a pulse. If there's no pulse, so you feel just on the, their side of the carotid, on their neck. Mm -hmm. if there's no pulse, we get straight into compressions. We need to make sure that we've got our hands in the right spot. So at the bottom of their rib cage, you'll find that there's where your rib, ribs join. Um, we use what they call a caliper method. So we hold our hands so it's roughly in the centre of their chest. Mm -hmm. You bring your top hand down and put it in between your other hand. Okay. And the idea is to try and get... So you just need to... Yep, that's fine. Is that right? Yep. We'll just bring... Bring him forward. A little bit closer. Mm -hmm. You need to try and get vertical above the patient. So we're okay. trying to get the downward pressure. So you yeah. wouldn't do this it's on the table. Difficult. It would be on yeah. the floor. Yeah. yeah, it's obviously a bit high on the table mm -hmm. here, but um, you need to be directly over the patient and press straight Pressing down on down. the chest. Okay. With this hand. So with this other hand. Yes. 
grab it uh -huh. like so, and press straight down. Okay. All right, so we're doing a quick version here, obviously. And, I know. Uh, there's and so many courses that are so important. That's what's important. I think that yep. everyone out there has to Google where you can do a course. Sure. Refresh yourself. How often are we needing a refresher course? Okay, so resuscitation is done every 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and first aid courses last for two years and you get a refresher in first aid. Very important. Steve and Alan, thank you guys. I hope you have a really quiet summer thank ahead. Thank you very much. Vital information. We'll uh, make it easy for them. Go and do your CPR. Got to brush up on your first aid course before mm -hmm. the holidays. We'll see you back here after the break on the House of Wellness. If you're suffering from the munchies and never feel full, the A to Z of vitamins may be for you. We've heard about emotional eating, but what about emotional shopping? We'll find out after the break here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. Now, we often hear people talk about guilty pleasures, mm. those little indulgences we have that make us feel good, even though they may not be good for us. And for many of us, it's retail therapy, spending hours in the shops, finding that special pair of shoes or handbag, and then paying way too much for it. Mm -hmm. Way too much. <sighs> While owning that special thing might feel great for a moment, the come down just doesn't feel good. You've cleared out your bank account, and now you have another item in your already cluttered wardrobe, silly. Now, here to help help us get control <laughs> of our shopping emotions and live with less is relationship expert Dr Nikki Goldstein. Help! <laughs> I think I still need help on this one myself. You're I'm still trying to get it right. You know what? I've seen your wardrobe. <laughs> you do need help too. Look, I, I have a concern mm. because I've been looking at this handbag online for some time now. It's very, very expensive and I know I'll love it, but I'll also have to be a little bit deceptive with how much it costs to the husband. Mm. Not good. That's going to make me feel bad. See, I feel like that's a completely different issue about you know, <laughs> shopping <laughs> and frugality. <laughs> We're yes. hiding things for our husband. That's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when it comes down to women in general, I think we, we all joke that we're a shopping addict. We all joke that we shouldn't be spending that money on those shoes or those handbags. But what we actually need to look at is the underlying issues underneath that. Yes. And that's what I did with the shopping diet because I got to a point where Went I had a, shopping diet. a six month shopping diet. I had a bad relationship with shopping because I was using it as a coping mechanism. And when we look at all the different types of behaviours we use as coping mechanisms, mm. they can get very dangerous. Now, of course, this wasn't life threatening, but I would get this anxiety because I'm thinking, I'm wasting time, I'm wasting money that I don't afford to have, you know, can't afford to really be spending, spending. at the moment. Mm. Why am I doing it? Mm. And it's that cycle that's short lived and then you're back at it again. So that brings us to the mm. next question. How do we manage that? Well, first of all, you've got to set a realistic goal. So for me, it was six months. I felt that that was That's something I time. could... Yeah, that it's something that I could do and something I probably needed to work out my relationship with buying things, my coping mechanism issues. So you've got to make sure that that's realistic because you don't want to blow it out to the fact where you're continually failing and then feeling yeah. bad. Yes. So yes. would you recommend going cold turkey or do you just sort of wean yourself off? What, the... Never shop <laughs> ever in your life. <laughs> no, but like for six months or maybe, or do you just make boundaries like I will only go into a shop rather than online? Or... Well, you set rules for yourself okay, yeah. that I think it's really good to share with other people because you've got to keep yourself accountable. Mm. If you're out with your friend having a coffee and you duck into the shop, your friend needs to know that the only thing you're allowed to buy is cosmetics that you've run out of, which was something that I put on my list. Okay. Okay. If I ran out of a mascara or Did a you end up going, I need six now because <laughs> <laughs> I need to buy things. You know, you really have to come up with rules that are appropriate for your life mm. to be able to really have a look at this in whatever period it might be, to be able to work out, well, what can I do to swap out the tangible with mm. the non-tangible. So that's habit, That's forcing you to look at your habits. Yes. And that can be quite confronting. Very confronting. It can be. And, you know, that's the challenge of this is it started off as, I think, a bit of fun. I thought, well, let's see how much time and money I can get back. And all of a sudden, I was confronted with this idea of, hang on a minute, Nikki, you're shopping when you're stressed, when you're anxious, mm. when you want to celebrate something. And really, <laughs> is that yes. bringing you any good to your life? Or does it just bring more anxiety and more stress into my life. 
the more so women I speak to realize that they have the same thing going on. Mm. It's a lot of self-reflection, right? Mm. So to sum it up, it's setting a goal and a list of rules. Yes. Asking a friend mm. to buy you something, maybe. <laughs> you need <laughs> Keeping yourself friends. accountable and yes. declutter, right? Yes. Get rid of, because less is more. Right? And there's such a good flow and effect that when you can start to clean out your life physically, you then have more brain space as well to start mm. focusing on what's going mm. on. So when we're analyzing why we're shopping, it's really important to be decluttering our mind and our physical world so as well. Good. Oh, that's bliss. Isn't it? Mm. Thank you. And good Nikki. luck with it. I agree. We <laughs> need it's not luck. not easy. <laughs> oh my God, we need luck. What? Oh, where does the clutter come from? It it's sneaks my in it, when you're sleeping. Just so much junk in our lives. I'm trying to do this every day. Over to you, Ed. Thank you, ladies. A to Z of vitamins time now, Gerald. Um, have you had one of those days when you just can't stop eating or you eat all day long and you still don't feel hungry? What is going on with our gut in this instance? Is, is there something we can take to help stop this feeling? We all love to eat. It's one of the pleasures of life, really, oh, yeah. isn't it? But I wanted to talk today briefly about a herb with a lovely name called Garcinia. Almost good enough to eat. Mm -hmm. And Garcinia is designed just to help the cravings and to help us metabolise sugar because the highs and lows of sugar, which we talked about last week, yeah. can be a real problem. So it's it's a really good herb. So really it is a never-ending battle in this sugar war that we go through, isn't it? Importantly, is Garcinia, say, a natural supplement? Yes, yes, it is, Ed. And remember, when we eat, we often eat far too quickly. Yes. And how often? You finish your meal and you think, wow, now bring on the next course. Garcinia actually settles that digestion process. It slows things down, just helps you get through your meal without necessarily rushing for more. Well, we're eating several times a day. Can we take the Garcinia several times a day? Exactly, three times a day. If you're okay. having three meals a day, three of those a day as well. What about for the many of us who are taking other medications? Is that OK with Garcinia? Mostly yes, but always check. Yeah, okay. Always check. Good tips. Anything to curb the appetite... Not a bad idea. No, yeah. well, and coming into the silly season, not bad. Yeah, really good. Uh, by the way, the A to Z of vitamins brought to us by Go Healthy. For healthy energy and vitality, try New Zealand's number one premium supplements, now available in Australia. Great advice. Thank you for that, Gerald. Stay with us. Plenty more to come right after the break here on The House of Wellness. Joe, it's been a jam-packed show today, hasn't it? We learned how to work out with some of these fitness fads like a Ooh. mermaid does and uh, how to take a shopping diet as well. <laughs> yeah, and really, really important, learning CPR. So get online, Google. You also want to be covering off babies and children. Mm -hmm. Summer is coming. Oh, yeah. Everyone By the way, should yeah. know. Google, Google, Google is kind of the sound your gut makes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's enough, OK? I can't help it. <laughs> well, you could. You could stop talking so much. That's one of the things I said. That's hurtful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're done, gang. Looking ahead, by the way, if you want any more from the show, you can always just Google uh, House of Wellness and uh, have a look at some of our uh, stories as well. To next week's show, we've got some tips for comfy travels. Ooh, yeah. And once again, I'll be getting my shirt off. Oh, yeah. 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 Help it. Against my will, <laughs> what can I say? We're talking about the importance of skin checks, though, something we should all be doing before the summer holidays kick in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, team. You're so supportive <laughs> Gosh, as always. I know. We can't Thanks, wait to Zoe. see it. Thanks to our friends at Chemist Warehouse. I'll disrobe now. Have a healthy and well week. Let's get Please this going. Please don't. Oh, it's so dark already.